before you even think about making your Dubsado workflows live to your clients, you should definitely make sure to test them. In today's video, I'm going to show you the very best way to test your workflows when you're all by yourself. My name is Ray and this is the Productive Co YouTube channel. On this video channel, I talk about all things Dubsado. Now in today's video, I'm talking all about testing your workflows before you start using them on your clients. And the purpose of this is to make sure that everything works correctly and that you don't have any mistakes inside, any spelling errors, any formatting errors, any coding errors, etc. We're going to make sure that all of that is running like a well-oiled machine before you use it on your clients. Now, testing workflows by yourself isn't my preferred method. I'll link to another video that shows you my preferred method for testing out workflows. Sometimes you might need to test out workflows by yourself. And I'm going to show you the very best way to test Dubsado workflows by yourself right now. The first thing you should do is open up Dubsado onto your web browser. In a second tab, make sure you open up your business email. Make note of what web browser you're using. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome. What you should do now is use a second web browser. So make sure that it's different than the one you are currently using. I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. And I have that open here. Um, I have opened up to the contact page on my website because that's the very first step of my workflows in Dubsado. And in a second window, I've opened up a second email address. So this is my personal email. It's not my business email. Okay, so you're going to have one web browser open with Dubsado and your business email and a second web browser open with your lead capture page or your contact page and a second email address. And the second one that you created, the second web browser that you opened is the second web browser you opened is going to be the client, okay? And the first one you opened is going to be for you. So you're going to make sure that you keep your actions in one web browser and your client's actions in the second web browser. So you're going to go through every single step in your workflow. Generally, the first point of contact is when a client reaches out to you through the contact form. So I'm going to fill out the contact form and make sure you don't use your name, okay? You, in this case, I'm Dolly Parton and the email I'm going to use will be the client email, which is my personal email. So I'm going to hit submit after the form is filled out. And this is just a notice here telling them that I will send them an email within 24 hours. Okay, so now I'm going back into my service provider web browser and I can see that I successfully have received a new lead. This is my confirmation. I'll go back into Dubsado and I'll just refresh the page. And there's my new lead, Dolly Parton. So that successfully went through. I'm going to open up Dolly's job folder and go to workflows because I have my lead capture set up to automate a workflow. And the next thing that's going to happen is the portal's going to activate and the Dubsado consulting form is going to be sent. So I have my workflows set up to activate from a lead capture and that's why this workflow is automatically there. So I'm going to just make sure that these steps go out um, and when I send the form to Dolly Parton, I'm going to make sure that I pretend I'm Dolly Parton under the second web browser and fill out the form. And Dubsado will send notifications to the service provider when that's done. So you're going to make sure that you go through every single step in your workflows. Um, and there might be some points where you need to force actions. Let me explain. Underneath the template section inside of workflows, I have office hours set between 8 and 5 during the day. This means that my forms and emails will only send out between 8 and 5. So if one is triggered at 6 p.m., it will wait until 8 a.m. to actually send it. So when I'm testing this, I might not 
be able to wait until um, 8 a.m. the next day. So what you can do is you can force actions. So you go back into projects, open the job folder, go to workflows, and then what you're going to do is either mark complete or force. Now there is a difference between the two. So force now means that it's going to do an action whether or not it's time to trigger it in your workflow. So if it's outside of office hours, hitting force now will send that email immediately. If I were to hit mark completed, that means that I'm telling the workflow that it's done, but it's not actually done. So there might be some reason why I want to skip a step in the workflow. Um, and by hitting mark completed, I'm letting the workflow know that it needs to start doing the next steps without actually having completed that step. So it's up to you if you want to hit mark completed or force now. Force now is probably better when you're testing your workflows so that the client can receive all the emails that they're supposed to and the forms. And you can open up each one of your forms and make sure there's no spelling errors, make sure all the formatting is correctly. And if you used anything like question mapping or smart fields, any of those more advanced Dubsado features, you can make sure that those turned out correctly on your forms. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. If you want more information on how to use Dubsado for your business, you can always head over to my website, ProductiveCo.com, for more information. Once again, my name is Ray. Thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel, and I'll see you around.